Well, that isn't going anywhere. I was asked by a flying bear if I want to review their Ghost 6. I'm like, sure, I could have another bear. And here we have the Flying Bear Ghost 6 Core XY3 printer. Flying Bear, huh? No, there's only one Flying Bear at Tripod's Garage, and that's Bear. So I removed the top of this well-packaged box, and boy, it is well, well packaged. I mean, really well packaged. Yeah, she's a hungry one. You got to pull hard. Okay, let's uh, just give a yank by the frame here since it's pretty stout here. There we go. Okay, I have to admit, packing is top notch here. <laughs> so um, be prepared. It's, um, it's more than what you would think to get this out of the box. I mean, it's very well constructed. I'll, apparently there was two plugs that came loose. And we're just going to pop them here. And I would assume that's because I um, pulled it out very um, firmly. <laughs> and there's a ton of foam in here. I mean, at this point, I would rather see cardboard instead of foam. But it is what it is. Let's see what's on the inside. At least we get a sample spool of white filament. It's more than what other manufacturers give you. And here we have a... Um, Back full of stuff. We got our snips and uh, look at the size of that putty knife. Hey, if you ever want to do drywall, just refer to this packaging. And what do we have here? Oh, that's our filament runout sensor. I believe that just gets mounted to the side of the machine. And next, we have our standard US three prong power cord. I think I have about 30 of those roaming through the house. And it looks like we get a spare hot end. Oh, it's PTFE lined. So, high temperature filaments? Mm, not so much. Sorry, people. And what do we have here? We have our uh, PTFE tube. Yep, so it's a, I guess you want to call it, it is a uh, reverse bowden setup because we are running a direct drive. And we have the door hardware. There's a little magnet in there. And um, just a few screws and a handle. And none of these bags are marked. Hey, would you look at that? A more than one foot long USB cable. I like that. And what is this? Well, it says it right on the front. The user's manual. At first glance, it seems rather intuitive, but the font is very small. Next, we have the spool holder. It mounts on the side as well. And finally, we have the direct drive. And um, yeah, a little bit of difficulties here. Struggling in vain. <laughs> the struggle is real. <laughs> this is a direct drive and it has actually a see-through window there. And it's a pancake motor, stepper motor, and more foam. I really think they could have used cardboard instead. I mean, this foam is very excessive. I mean, it's to protect the machine, which is great and all, but, um, yeah, there's always one last one hiding. Again, it is PTFE lined. It's nice that it is that easy to take it out and measure just in case if you need to replace one. And the direct drive is just mounted with two screws right on top. A very easy setup. The only problem is, is trying to tuck this, uh, wire off to the side. Otherwise, all you have to do is secure two screws, one on one side and one on the other. The bags are not marked, so make sure you use the right screws. And then we're going to just plug in our stepper motor. Now we're going to just affix some zip ties here and snip off the ends. Now we're going to uh, install the Bowden tube guide. This is actually mounted upside down right now, but uh, it will be corrected within the video. Now there is no um, how-to video on their website or on the SD card, so actually it might be worthwhile to watch this if you're going to uh, buy one of these machines. And later on also I 
found a little bit of a problem with this little uh, fastener. But in the meantime, we're going to fish the filament runout sensor wire from the inside to the outside. And we're going to grab our filament sensor and we're going to put two screws through from the inside to the outside. And um, yeah, this is going to require two hands. Good thing it didn't require two legs, otherwise, um, yeah, I would not have a great success with it. Go ahead and just tighten these two screws in and um, just make sure they're nice and snug. And then that's it. Next, we're going to plug in our filament sensor wire into the filament sensor and pivots. And um, yeah, you may want to put that hanger on. Next, we're going to put our filament spool holder on. We want to make sure that uh, curved part is facing up. It helps keep the spool in place. You'll see that the Bowden tube guide is now mounted the correct way. Slide the Bowden tube in and secure it. Now we're going to just go ahead and put the other end into the direct drive. Just make sure it's all the way in, nice and snug. Now let's go ahead and put our door on. I believe it's like some type of uh, plexiglass. It's pretty thin, but it should work. Lots of saran wrap on it. And plus it has film on both sides. For a minute I thought it was just frosted, but it's not. And it's very clear and very reflective. Hmm. Looks like I may have to shave my head. Well overdue. Now we're just going to put in four screws, two on the top hinge and then two in the bottom hinge. And it basically is pretty aligned. I mean, it's got a lot of forgiveness on here. And now we have a Phillips screw with a flathead screwdriver. You wouldn't happen to have a Phillips head screwdriver, would you? But needless to say, it does work. So. Go ahead and screw it on your little handle. And it's magnetic. There we go. Yep, definitely need to shave that head. Now you can go ahead and remove that piece of paper that's on your build plate. It gives you some warnings and hey, tells you that you can use this piece of paper for leveling. <laughs> no more digging through that recycling bin for using old bills to level your build plate. Oh, you know what time it is? Peely time. Ah, I guess that was kind of lame. Now, actually, before I received the machine, I received an email from Flying Bear saying that I needed to replace a fuse. This looks to be a 10 amp fuse that's in the machine. So I removed it and it looks like I'm going to be replacing it with one that they provided, which is a 5 amp fuse. I mean, that's my, my vision is starting to uh, <laughs> get the best of my age. So that's what it looks like to me. So we go ahead and replaced it. And we want to make sure our uh, power supply is at, where is this thing? There it is, at 115. Bingo, all set. Now this unit does not come with any auto bed mesh leveling. So we got to do it the good old classic way. Leveling the four corners. And we're just going to go ahead and hit the home button here. And we're off to the races, so to speak. Once our printer is done homing, we're going to click on back here. When done, we're going to click on tools and then leveling. And um, now we just follow one, two, three, four and use the paper that they provided as our leveling. And we just want to make sure that uh, we loosen or tighten these screws on the bottom just so where the paper just drags. And um, yeah, I mean off to the races. I mean off to the races. This took me about four or five tries to get or passes to get it to be as level as I can make it. Now that we're all level, we're going to use some Profit uh, Mint PLA. Yes, they're actually called Profit because they want everyone to make a profit off their 3D printing. Send it through the filament runout sensor and up through the Bowden tube. Before we continue any further, I'd like to introduce today's video sponsor. And today's video sponsor is PCB Way. Are you looking for a PCB? Well, look no further than PCB Way. They're their one-stop shop for your PCB and manufacturing needs. Want to just generate a quote? It's pretty simple. Then you could do a standard PCB, advanced PCB. You could do a FTC rigid flex PCB. You could do some assembly, and you could also do SMD stenciling. But that's not it. They also offer CNC and also 3D printing. 
<laughs> it's literally a one-stop shop for all your needs. You're looking for a little project to do? Look at the shared projects. And you can go ahead and basically order a whole kit and just do a little project that someone else has created. It's a great community section for to share your ideas and have other people build the projects that you are working on. And I would like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Now let's see how this Flying Bear Ghost 6 prints, shall we? I have no idea why I opened the door and then just pulled apart from the top. But anyways, I did this a lot. Uh, this was the only file that was on the SD card. Literally the only file. And it was, it looks like it's some type of, I don't know, like vacuum attachment thing. But it came out really, really, really nice. I'm very impressed with it. You know, those are your bridging that's on the bottom. But otherwise, Really nice uh, demo piece, so to speak. Again, I have no idea what it is. And next we have uh, Tripods Garage, a boring calibration cube. Yes, it's a boring calibration cube. And there we go, let me focus, there we go. And um, it looks great. I mean, it's very accurate, nice edges, a little bit of a uh, elephant foot on the bottom there, too much squish, but Otherwise, all the surfaces are nice and crisp. And the bottom layer, a little bit too much of a squish there. I may have to go ahead and redo it for uh, leveling. And next, we have a Benchy. Well, look, I reached in this time and got it. The bed wasn't exactly cooled off all the way. But uh, here we go. Some stringing here. Now, I did follow all the instructions in the manual for the Cura settings. Only thing is, is I've been messing around with the retraction, and this was at 1.5. I have no idea what the retraction settings is for this direct drive. So the stringing is pretty bad on here, but all the surfaces, minus these two blobs here, are not too bad. Sure, you could do some post-processing like this, but honestly, you shouldn't have to anymore. I haven't had this uh, type of stringing in a bench in a long time. But let's continue on. And now we have a bunny a good luck bunny this is just so cute and i think this is like the proper filament for the mint green and all the surfaces are just like really really nice you can see how clean of a print this is look at the ears i mean they're just like perfect sure you do see the layer lines i mean it's based off of uh the pla and this is by random z Random Z, I guess. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but the link will be in the description below if you're looking to purchase it. Look at even the the tail is all fluffy looking. Ah, oh, what a great model! And I also increased the retraction to 2.5, and there was absolutely no stringing on this. Now, technically, it's closer to Valentine's Day than it is Easter, but you know what? I couldn't resist doing that bunny rabbit. But here we have a low poly lockable heart by. The light speed and again i'll put the link in the description below this is a lockable heart this is at 200 percent scale all you do is you twist the two halves together and it locks in place say that you want to um, maybe uh put a ring or some money or something in here very simple design just go ahead and line up your two locking areas and then you just turn very simple this is a low poly heart by Stephen the Lightspeed. Again, I'll put it in the description below. Now there's been something that's irking me. That Benchy is really irking me. I think it's time to try it again with different settings. We'll have to fight another round. After increasing the retraction to 2.5, it looks like that may have solved the issue here. This Benchy so far is coming out really nice. I also leveled the bed again and adjusted the Z. And what do we have here? Well, we have a lot nicer of a Benchy. Definitely a redemption round. A few little wisps and that's it. Maybe increasing it from 2.5 to 
maybe 2.8 or even 3 for the retraction. But so much cleaner. No more elephant foot on the bottom. We bring in the other benchy. Night and day difference. Okay, now I feel better about the results here. Uh, you know, it's just hard for me to believe that a printer nowadays can't do a, a benchy. I haven't had a failed benchy in such a long time. So I would recommend a retraction anywhere from 2.5 to 3.0. So what are my thoughts on this Ghost 6 by Flying Bear? Well, first and foremost, this is a Core XY 3D printer and it is running on silent drivers. So basically the only thing you hear is the fans, cooling fans and the power supply. And it is built pretty darn solid. The movements are very nice and precise and it has a colored touchscreen in front and it has a door. The hot end has dual part coolers and the direct drive has a nice clear window so you can see if you have a filament jam and you can remove those four screws to help ease your pain to remove that filament jam. This printer is also equipped with flame detection. However, I didn't really test it. It's supposed to turn off the whole machine if a fire is detected. This little 3D printer is built like a tank. There's no aluminum extrusions here. All steel casing all the way around. Uh, even has a little exhaust fan on the back. Don't know how effective it is. Now, what about the needs for improvement category? By having that Bowden tube guide, well, puts that Bowden tube at a weird angle. And it makes the filament scratch. The solution? Very easy. Just don't use that guide at all. And then you will no longer have your filament scratching along the side of it they should just have the guide further out and that would solve all the issues. Now the glass, it sticks very, very well. If you let it cool off, about 10 minutes, the parts will come right off. I would suggest replacing it with a flexible PEI sheet because there's four grub screws holding down this glass bed. So it'll make it a kind of a pain to remove. Now, I don't know what this rod is made out of in the back, but it's crooked and it doesn't line up all that great with the home switch for the Z. It just needs to be replaced with something a little bit straighter. Now this has a cantilever design. It's pretty sturdy, but we'll see how it holds up for heavier prints over time. Now the touchscreen is kind of a mixed bag. What I mean by that is you see more and more manufacturers going this route where they're basically saying less is more. You're not going to get all the advanced features or anything. You can get a vibrant display with big icons to click on and um, just to navigate with. I guess they're suggesting that you may not need all these advanced features anymore coming out of the box. So there's really nothing advanced on here, so to speak. Um, it, you just get what you need. It has Wi-Fi. I didn't have time to test it. Maybe I could do that in the follow-up video. This, the screen was rather responsive. You get this fancy stylus to navigate with. So you don't use um, your fingers to get any fingerprints on there. Welcome back to the 90s. But yeah, display, it just works. Now the build volume is 255 by 210 by 210. I, I know it seems bigger in the filming, but it's actually a pretty small printer. And I'll leave this one as a viewer's choice. This is an umbrella that's included to make your Ghost 6 completely enclosed. Let me know your thoughts on this below. As of right now, during the publication of this video, you can get the Go 6 Core XY for 319 US. To me, that's not a bad deal. This may not be the fastest Core XY out there, but for 319 US, hmm, uh, personally, I think it's a pretty good deal. But I want you to come up with your own conclusion. You know, I've given you the information, and uh, hopefully, is enough for you to make up your mind if this is the right 3D printer for you. Appreciate you turning into Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in.